All right guys, so let's start off with the two wire control. So we're gonna have line one, and we're going to have uh, some type of switch. So for this guy, we're going to use a limit switch. And from there, we're gonna go to our coil. So we've gotta to go to the coil of our contactor. And then, just so we don't have to purchase a new motor, if we have an overload situation, we're gonna throw in the overload there to finish everything off. So this guy is gonna be our overload. Okay, so this is gonna be providing us with our two wire control. Okay, if we're gonna do wiring numbers, right, then this guy be one, our return is gonna be two, this guy is gonna be three, three, one over here, uh, and then don't forget this little jumper right here for wire number four. Okay, so for this guy, we'll wire up the, the two wire, and we're just gonna follow through and the beauty of uh, having these whiteboards on the bottom is that we can uh, just write on here, we can keep track of all our wires as we go through. Now this one is gonna provide two wire control in that when I close this switch, the motor is going to turn on. When I open that switch, then the motor is going to turn off. There will be no way to, to maintain that contactor being on. Let's take a look at how it's wired. Okay guys, let's take a look at how this two wire works. So I've used the, the limit switch right here in order to turn the motor on and off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the disconnect. So I'm using my left hand. I should actually remove my jewelry before working on any of this stuff. Uh, I'm gonna grab the disconnect and I'm gonna put my face away and then turn the disconnect on. Okay, the, the amount of current that's actually gonna flow in this shop uh, is quite low. So all of the, the PPE that we need in this shop would be uh, just glasses. Okay, so now that I've uh, turned this guy disconnect on, I should be able to just toggle this limit switch here, and it should turn the motor on. Beautiful. Okay, let it go, and the motor turns off. Toggle it in the opposite direction, and it turns on, and it turns off. Excellent. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on inside the actual starter as we do that. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll toggle the, uh, the switch here. So now the door of the, the disconnect is open. I'm wearing the appropriate PPE, meaning uh, for a shop we should have a, at a minimum be wearing uh, safety glasses, just in case we have a flash here on any of our components. If I toggle the limit switch, you can see right here that the <coughs> contactor is actually pulled in. If I let it go, you can see it pulls out. So that's that electromagnet inside. It's pulling in and allowing the current to go from line one down to T1, from line two to T2, and from line three to T3. So limit switch on or closed. And that brings power to our coil. So our coil is right here. So that energizes that ele electromagnet, which pulls this in, which changes the state of the contacts. One, two, and three contacts. Okay, if it is running and, uh, and we trip uh, the overload, it should stop the motor. So let me trip the overload and we'll see if it stops our motor here. Okay, so you can see here that this guy here is tripped and the motor has stopped. Okay, so I'm going to turn the power off. You would let the overload cool for a while and then you would reset. Now you don't need to have your hands in here to, to reset. There is a, a push button on the front of the front face of the disconnect to do this. Okay, that resets my overloads. I'll turn my power back on and I'll toggle my limit switch. And the motor is running. Sounds a little bit funky. Maybe I didn't push it in all the way. Let me try again. Okay, let's try her again. There we go, that sounds better. So I didn't push the overload all the way in, so it wasn't making really good contact on, uh, on that line one. So then you heard the motor doing some funky stuff. Excellent, okay, let's take a look at, uh, at the way this is wired. So I have uh, the terminal from my supply, so I've grabbed a, a supply terminal here. Let me just turn off the power before I throw my hands in there. Okay, so I, I have the power coming from here, so again, all these terminal blocks correspond to terminals on the top and over here. So I've grabbed uh, a line one. 
I can see that the voltage on this coil right here, if we zoom in a little bit, the voltage on the coil is 208 volts. So I need to provide it with 208 volts. I have done that by grabbing uh, line one from up here. That line one goes out, goes over to the limit switch. So it comes and toggles over to the limit switch here. And then from the limit switch, I have another wire coming back. And that wire then goes to my coil. So that comes up and this terminal right here corresponds to my coil. The other side of my coil runs through the overload, the normally closed of the overload. And then I go from the overload back to, in this case, line two, because I need to provide this guy with 208 volts. This is two wire control. If we take a look at and pan out a little bit here. There we go. So this is two wire control. So there should be just two wires in the pipe. We can see there is one, two wires in the pipe going to the limit switch. Okay, three wire would have three wires going out to a stop start station. Okay, so again, one more time with the two wire. Uh, when I energize this guy, then I'm turning the contactor on, which is allowing the current to go to the motor. Let it go, contactor pulls out, and the motor comes to a stop. Okay, if that motor was running, so this is called low voltage release, in that if that motor uh, was running, so let's just close this so we can toggle the power on and off. Okay, so if it was running, and the power went out in the form of came maybe a brownout or something like that, and you lost voltage, and then the power came back on, the two wire control allows that motor to turn right back on. As long as that limit switch, or more likely a thermostat or pressure contact is calling for that pump or that fan to turn back on. So it's low voltage release, in that if you have a brownout, the motor turns off, as long as this still is still calling for the motor to turn back on, when the power is restored, then the motor goes right back on. All right guys, hopefully that covers everything for the two wire. Next video is gonna be on the three wire.